So where does a stock start from? Well, it starts from this, pieces of wood. Now, in this particular case, I've gone ahead and picked out my own uh, from just a local uh, uh, wood shop. And there's places like this in nearly every major city that you can go to. And it's really a great way to, you know, I don't know, kind of put your own mark on the stock. So what I did is I started with this black limbo, which is a really nice high figure wood. And then I picked out some purple heart, and that's going to be the stringers down the middle. The only wood I don't have pictured is the African wenge, which is going to be the centerpiece uh, of the stock when it's done. Uh, all three of these stocks are African hardwoods, and I really, really like them. Uh, I've never worked with this black limbo before, but I've seen uh, plenty of stocks with purple heart, so I felt pretty confident with what it was going to uh, add to the picture. After my... Uh, well, it's not really a gunsmith, but after my stock maker gets the wood, he slices it all into pieces that he's going to use. So here you can see uh, the purple heart on the left and the black limba on the right. And then he uh, gets together the rest of it, which this is him starting to cut it into slabs. And you can see that, that wenge on the top. It's a really, really dark, almost black wood, which is really awesome. Uh, again, all three of these are really strong woods to use. The next thing he's going to do is lay them out. So this is the actual stock as it is, you know, laminated or layered. And he's going to glue it down next. And this is what it looks like when it's being glued up. Now, this guy's a master woodworker. He's got every tool that he needs. And that is a whole lot of clamps to make sure nothing goes wrong. So this is what one of the glued up sections looked like. And trust me, that thing is not coming apart. So here are what the two cut stocks look like. Now these are unfinished, they're a little rough. And you know, this is all stuff that my stock maker sent me. He wasn't comfortable sending video of the actual process that he uses. So you know, you get to see what the blank looks like and then you get to see what the cut looks like. What he is going to share with you in a minute though is the finishing process, which is actually pretty cool. Okay, we're back in the booth. I've uh, sprayed four coats. On these stocks, it's kind of a tough angle to record this because the booth is not that big. Anyway, normal process will be I will spray four coats, which I just did. I'll let them hang and cure overnight, and then tomorrow we will sand and repeat. And that process, I will cut a quick video on that um, to show you what we're doing, but we will progressively sand smoother and smoother, and we'll touch bases on that in the morning. Okay, we're back. The stocks are all masked off. They're hanging in the booth, and now it's time to get ready to spray. We're going to talk about equipment here for a moment. Um, the prep all. All surfaces need to be degreased, wax and de uh, degreased prior to spraying, so even bare wood. We'll, we'll use that on a very clean rag and wipe everything down. I use a PPG product called Omni. It's a high solids uh, automotive clear coat. And then on the left are the various hardeners. Hardeners are, are uh, hardeners are dependent on temperature. So here in North Idaho this summer, it's been a little hot. So we have to use one appropriately. Uh, mixing cup, stir sticks, cone strainer. You always strain your your product before you put it in the gun. The guns I use um, are actually pretty simple. They're just inexpensive Home Depot HVLP guns. And they seem to work really, really well. And, and the reason I use them is because the solvents have gotten so expensive for cleaning um, that I really spend minimal time cleaning these because I consider them kind of a throwaway. Um, with minimal cleaning, I can probably spray 15 stocks with them. If they get a little gummied up, mostly on the outside, uh, I just pitch them because they're like 35 bucks a piece. Um, I've had expensive equipment in the past still do as a matter of fact I just choose not to use it um, just mostly for the cost of, of cleaning solvents and cleaning them uh, thoroughly so that's where we're at on that we will hop into the booth do some spraying and see how they come out okay here we are back in the shop I sprayed four coats on these stocks yesterday and I want to show you in the light they're pretty ugly actually which is typical for a first the first coats. Um, if you can see in the light, there's a lot of porous properties to this wood through there. Uh, but not to fret, we got some bubbles, 
coming out of the end grain here because the shop was pretty warm yesterday. But uh, no worries because we will sand all that out and it's part of the process. Let's see, that's pretty ugly right there. It's part of the process. Um, we will sand starting with 220 grit sandpaper, preferably on a block. And I will show you how this pretty much works here. We'll forget the block for now because I'm one-handed. But with the automotive clears, you can see it sands really easy. Turns white. We call it, it dusts up. But as you sand over this, and normally I would use the block to make sure it's flat, you can see the high and low spots. Okay? So we will just sand all that out. You don't have to sand it until it's perfectly smooth because we're going to build other coats that's going to fill all that. But this is the process that we're going to do at this time. Is sand all these stocks. What you see there, the light and dark spots, that's the high and low spots. Sand it all out and rinse and repeat. We will clean the stocks again and spray them. Okay, we're getting ready to degrease these stocks for the final coats and like I told you before we're using what's called prep uh, clean prep or prep clean something like that it's just a degreasing solution gets off all the grubby fingerprints and oils off your hands uh, I was asked why degrease every time it's just standard procedure for any kind of coatings especially automotive coatings and it's really important when you get your um, stock back from the uh, gunsmith because they tend to have oily greasy equipment when they're inletting and grease and oil does not mix with finishes. Another question I had was why don't I use fillers on the wood to fill the pores instead of multiple coats. Well back in the day when I had a cabinet shop I would do that because the fillers were compatible with the products that we were spraying on cabin doors and cabinets and interior woodwork, those type of deals. Um, automotive finishes are very, very particular to what they're going over. A good example would be back in the 90s when all the paint was peeling off the Fords and the Chevys. What was underneath that paint was not compatible to the top coats. So, instead of taking the risk of um, ruining the stock, having to do it over again, I'll just apply multiple coats. And it's also kind of a misnomer as far as the number of coats. You know, when I say there's 11, 12, 15 coats on here, that might be 11 or 12, 15 sprayed coats, but you got to remember you're sanding a lot of those coats off um, in between. So I would say when we're all said and done, there's probably a thickness of probably eight coats. Um, another question was uh, different kinds of finishes. Can I go to... Home Depot or something like that and get a finish that would be acceptable. Sure you can. You can spray a, a lacquer, you know, like Deft, D-E-F-T. You can spray a polyurethane on here. Um, most of those finishes will come out looking great. Same process, they're just harder to sand. They're not designed to sand between coats. And a lot of them are not designed to buff out when you're all said and done. But if you don't have spray equipment, you can certainly get an acceptable finish by following the same procedures with a different product. So, now, we're going to spray the final coats on these. And then I'll catch you when it's time to buff them out. Thanks. Good morning. We're back in the shop with F-Class John's stocks that we're working on here. We're going to kind of recap what we've done. This one, well, let me recap. We started off raw wood sand to 180 grit. Then I sprayed four coats of automotive clear on here, sanded with 220 grit. Sprayed four more coats on, sanded with 320 grit. Sprayed four more coats on, sanded, and that's where we're at now. Today I'm going to sand with 400 grit because it's almost perfect. There's a few little imperfections yet to get out. Uh, I will sand with 400 grit and spray probably three more coats on before I cut and buff. The other thing I'm going to do today is underneath here, I'm going to remove this masking because there's a buildup of finish around the edge. So I will carefully cut this masking out, make sure I lightly sand around the edges so we don't have any sharp edges or anything that can peel a finish up. 
then I'll remask it for the final three coats. Um, leaving this on can get a little uh, little touchy when you're peeling it out because you can actually lift the finish off because there's so much buildup on the tape and everything. So it's a good idea. Cut that out. Um, remask it. Final few coats and call it good. Um, that trigger guard area is always a tough area because the trigger guards always fit so tight and if you get too much of a buildup a finish in there you'll never get your trigger guard in. So as you can see in the light this is looking pretty good. Just a few little spots whether it be dust or whether it be a bubble or or some orange peel. We'll take care of that on this sanding and then we'll be ready to cut and buff it out on the next one. So that is it for now and it's time to go to work while it's still cool and get these stocks finished out. Okay we're back in the shop we've sprayed our final coats on uh, F-Class John's stocks we're getting ready to do the process called cutting and buffing. We are going to wet sand the finish with 2000 grit sandpaper wet or dry sandpaper with a block and in the water, I typically put a little bit of Blue Dawn dish soap to act as a surfactant and a lubricant. Just makes things a little easier. And as you can see, the stocks turned out really nice as far as just being sprayed. There's still a few little imperfections. And I sanded, and I hope, I don't know if it'll come in on the video, right there on the end of the stock, you can see where I sanded it with 2000 grit. And right down where that reflection is, you can see a little bit of what we call orange peel. And that's what we're trying to get rid of so we can buff this out. It's not a long process. 2000 grit cuts through this pretty well, especially since it's soft. It was just sprayed yesterday. So the finish is still on the soft side. So we'll get at it. And I will show you what the buffing is. When the okay, welcome back. We've sanded these stocks with 2000 grit sandpaper. And one of the things when you're sanding this stuff, um, obviously it's wet because you're using wet or dry sandpaper. You wipe them dry with a paper towel or what have you. And if you hold it up to light, you can see the spots that you've missed because it's going to be dull versus shiny. Uh, so you can check on everything you missed. So now they just they, they look smooth, they look great, beautiful stocks. Now we're going to do what's called buffing them. And I usually start with a medium cut. We have a buffer and two pads. This is a cutting pad. This is a polishing pad. They're a different compound of foam. Anyway, I usually get my pads wet and soft first so it doesn't suck up all the compound. So we will get started. First thing I'll do is get the water off the pad. Simple spin cycle. and we will apply compound to the pad. Since I do a lot with the edge, I will go ahead and apply quite a bit to the edge of the pad. It's kind of a messy process. But that's the way it is. We start off most buffers have a variable speed, so we start off slow not to sling product everywhere. Always start with the buffer off of the work. And I try to go over all the work like so just to get compound everywhere. Got way too much on here. But it'll work. Kind of slinging it everywhere. A medium cut compound so it'll take out all those scratches from the sandpaper and start to develop a shine to it. The 
buffer's quite big for this type of work, but it's what I have. Don't want to leave the buffer in one spot too long because you don't want to burn burn the finish from heat. with this compound I will take the stock to the sink and wash it all off before I go to the other compound because it is an abrasive. Obviously you don't want to be polishing with the next compound with remnants of the old stuff on there. Don't want to bore you too much with that. Okay, the first series and the buffing is done. I've switched pads, gone to a different compound. These are Meguiar's products. I just like using them because I'm used to using them. And if you notice, there's a little arrow and there's a number chart. The higher number, the coarser or the heavier cut the, the product is. So when you get down into your polishes, this is called swirl remover. When you get down into your polish, polishes and things like that, the number is lower, it's a lot finer, so it's going to polish instead of cut. So anyway, same procedure as last time, just a different compound, a different pad. In case you haven't noticed on these videos, there's a lot of rinse and repeat involved in this process. So I will get this done, and the next time you see me, I will show you with the finished rifles. Well, John, there you go. Everything's buffed out, hardware's put back in. Shining like a diamond. Should be a, a great addition on the firing line of two more beautiful wood stocks. Hope you enjoyed these videos. John, I hope you enjoy your stocks. Good luck. And here are my beauties in person. So I am just, man, I'm, I'm just pumped. Uh, you know, these things are just absolutely gorgeous looking. Just really, really excited. Um, you know, you can laugh at my trigger guards all you want, but nobody's going to mistake who owns them. Now, I do have... Uh, I've got a black and I've got two silvers, so I can always swap them out if I want, but I really like the uniqueness of the trigger guards. And then if you look on the underside here, you can see... You know, so this is all black limba. And then this is Purple Heart and then African Wenge. So these are all African woods, which are really, really strong. Like, these are stupidly strong woods. And this is a, a pretty darn strong wood. Um, in fact, it's tougher to work with. And then, you know, I've done a couple little custom things. I had him bevel the back end, which you don't see a lot. But it just gives a little extra buffer against catching on anything, which I just like the idea of. And you can see both of them. Both of them have that on it. Uh, they both are rocking the RAD uh, system, which I love, uh, having used it for a while now. And just really nice wood grain, uh, all uh, inlet embedded for my actions. And I'm just super pumped, like really, really excited. So let me get these babies mounted up and uh, let's have some fun. And here we have the finished bolted in guns and they are looking good. So you can see here, really nice barrel channel, really nice barrel channel up above. I like to have plenty of clearance. I don't like anything messing with my barrels. You can see the the wood is just amazing. You know, you're kind of guessing when you pick out, uh, you know, wood because you just don't know what's going to happen to it. Um, you know, this is, you know, as you saw, quite a few pieces of wood combined 
when you look at it, you know, from the top, sure, there's, you know, there's the wenge and then the purple heart, you know, but then this is another multi layers outward. And, um, you know, you can see like, here's the seam for one piece of wood. And then, so that, this is one, one sheet, this is another. So it's pretty interesting, the whole process. But, uh, man, I am just pumped to get these out and go shoot them. Uh, these are what you're going to see in my videos from now on. And I am just, man, I'm just super excited. This is just, um, I've never had a matched pair per se. And so now to have this kind of brother sister, uh, set of stocks, I'm just really, really excited. So you can see, I already showed you a little bit of this side, but it's a little darker over here, but anyway. There they are. There's the process. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that video. I know it's uh, kind of a departure from a lot of the stuff I normally do, but I thought you guys would find it interesting. And I uh, hope you guys have a good day. Talk to you later.